Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the adoration. Continue being a good God in our lives, Lord. Continue leading, continue taking over. Lord, we ask that you dominate this time, that you become the center of everything, Lord. Father, without you, there's no meaning. Without you, there's no living. We surrender all that we are and all that we have unto your careful hand. That, oh Lord, you may have your way, that your part and your plan may be played in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as your word is going to be ministered, we pray that our hearts and our minds may be receptive to the word of God that is able to build us up in the inner man and give us an inheritance. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you may open up our spirits, O oh God, to receive the seed, the seed that is your word implanted in our hearts that is able to save our souls. Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor and all the adoration. We thank you, O oh Lord, that your name is a strong tower where the righteous run for refuge, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we surrender all that we are, all that we have, O oh God. Lord, we choose you. Lord, we choose you. We choose you, we choose you, we choose you a thousand times, Lord. Father, we choose you again and again that you may have your way in us, Lord, that you may lead, that you may center all things in the mighty, wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. It is always a privilege to be in the presence of God. It is always a privilege to be sharing the good news of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is, you know, right now, God has graced us with the, with, has given us the grace to be in the, in the inner tabernacle, in the inner sanctuary, to gather in the chambers of his heart. Hallelujah. It is always a privilege to be in the presence of God. Amen. We must always make sure that we don't go complacent, that we don't get used to the presence of God, because there's always something new that He's about to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Intimate conversations. Intimate conversations are always, always held in a particular place that lovers meet. Hallelujah. Amen. Lovers have a place where they meet. Lovers have a place where they speak. There are conversations, there are things that are not said everywhere and anywhere. There's a particular spot, there's a sweet spot. Hallelujah. It's like a charger, you know when you take your phone and you charge it, and it's not charging and you need to fix a cord, you want a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot in Christ. Amen. There's a sweet spot, there's a particular place that you grab a hold of in Christ that is able to transform your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you Jesus. God today is going to teach us about faith. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> ah, I was the one. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I've touched the sweet spot of my relationship with God. You know, sometimes I cry myself to sleep and just thank God for the love that He has for my life. You know, the life that I live is is captured by the love that I have for God. Everything about my life is centered around God. Everything, Amen. everything, everything, everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of Hebrews 11, chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. So, in most cases in the church, things are not adequately explained. You know, things are, are said in passing. They are not given proper time to, to be explained well, to be understood well. So allow me today to take you through an exposition. It's like a trip that we're going to. So remember the Bible, the scriptures are not the end on their own. They are a gateway to a particular reality of the spirit. Amen. If you read God is love and you finish there, you have not touched what the scripture is speaking about. You need to be in a point where you actualize what the scripture is speaking about. Amen. Romans, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. Can we read it together? One, two, go. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Ah. Hallelujah. You know, God is a kingly spirit. Whenever you interact with God, you must have in mind that He is not a man. He became a man, but primarily He's a kingly spirit. And there's a protocol to approaching a king. 
Amen? There's a particular type of style that you need to embrace when you approach the throne of God. And the Bible says a lot about God, but one of the things that it says is that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible. You can pray and fast and speak in tongues, but if you don't have faith, God is not pleased. Amen? So it says here, now faith. Hallelujah. It says now faith. There's a type of way the Bible describes things. Remember Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? It says, Joshua, can we go quickly to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? Remember, we are going through an exposition. Amen. So it says now faith. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The, pro the, 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 the initial rendering, the Hebrew rendering says that you will be prosperous and have good success. Not, not entirely successful. So it says you need to have good success. So there are, there's a particular way, there's a particular time of writing, there's a particular type of delivery that the Bible uses to explain some realities in the spirit. Amen? Hebrews 11 one says, now faith, not faith. Now faith means faith in the now. Faith is not hope. Faith is not believing. Let's go to Hebrews 11, Hebrews 1 verse 11. No, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It says, now faith is being sure of what you hope for and being confident of what you can't see. Hope is another word for expectation. For example, when I say, I'm going home and I hope there is electricity. In other words, I'm expecting there is electricity. It is not faith. Amen? Hope and faith are not the same thing. Believing and faith are also not the same thing. When I say, I believe I'm a man, that is a reality that is in my heart. Amen? Are we together? The Bible says in the, in the book of Romans 10, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you believe with your heart, not with your mind. Amen? Believing is a function of the heart. So it says, now faith is being sure of what you are expecting and being confident of what you can't see. In other words, you can't prove something, but you are standing in the reality of its existence. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who, who's going to wake up tomorrow? Who's going to wake up tomorrow? When you sleep tonight, who's going to wake up tomorrow? Can you prove it? No, you can't. So you have faith that you will wake up tomorrow. Amen? So part of you having faith is preparing and ironing your clothes tonight for tomorrow. Yeah. Amen? So faith without appropriate corresponding actions is not faith. It is only believing. Amen? Amen? So you find some people pray and pray and say, Lord, please heal me, please heal me. And then they die. They didn't have faith. They were believing that God was going to heal them, but they didn't have faith. Faith says, now faith. In other words, there's a type of praying. Faith doesn't say, God heal me. It says, Lord, I receive the healing that you have given me by your stripes. So it is you walking in the present reality of the Spirit of God that He has created for you. Amen? So the Spirit of God crushes things. He, there's, there's a, ooh. Hallelujah. There's a way the Spirit of God crafts things. There's a way the Spirit of God speaks things. Amen? And until and unless we adapt that, until and unless we learn how to speak the way God speaks, we can't realize what God says we should realize. Hallelujah. So there are different types of faith. There's what we call charismatic faith. Can we go to the book of Mark 11, verse 24? Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Hallelujah. Can we read it together? One, two. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Do you see it? It says, it does not say, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it and that you will have it. No. It says, believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So, so he's speaking about charismatic faith. 
Charismatic faith is faith for results. For example, if you want to pass well, that is a result of life. Amen? If you want to find a job, that is a result of life. If you want to get this and that, that is a result of life. So what are you going to do? You are going to take the word and activate it. That is charismatic faith. That is you acting out the faith. Amen? And then we have salvation, or rather salvation faith. Salvation faith and charismatic faith. Remember, charismatic faith is for results. Salvation faith is for faith in Christ independent of results. Hallelujah. In other words, you remain Christian. Whether you pray and fast for a thing that doesn't come to pass, your faith is not deterred. You are still standing in the reality of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Let us go quickly to the book of John chapter 6. Verse, from verse 66 to verse 69. So we will start at verse 66, John chapter 6, verse 6. John chapter 6, verse 66. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we are going to read it together. One, two, three. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Next. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Next. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. 69. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Ish. Hallelujah. So Simon Peter now had reached a level of his walk in God where independent of result he had learned to trust God. Amen. Apostle Paul says that I have learned to be abased, I have learned to be abound, I have learned to be happy, I have learned to be sad. But in all circumstances God is still good. Amen. Hallelujah. If your relationship with God, if your belief in God is based on what he does, it is faulty. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Remember when we had COVID-19? COVID a lot of people left the church. A lot of people, where was God when my, parent, my father died? Where was God when this happened? Where was God when I lost my job? So your faith in God was dependent on what he does for you. That is shaky. Yeah. Hallelujah. Remember what he said to Peter. He said that you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He says you are Peter, you are a rock. He's not speaking about a rock that you find on the street when you are walking, that you can throw. He's also not speaking about the rock on the side when you are driving so that you don't run into people's houses. He's speaking about the Petra. Those in geology may know this. He's speaking about the foundation of the earth. There's a part of the foundation of the earth called the Petra, the bedrock. Amen? So he says, unless your house, your life, yourself is built upon the foundation of the bedrock, you will not stand. But he says, when your house is built there, in that, when your house is built on, on the bedrock, when the winds come, when the storms come, when the rain come, when everything comes, the house remains standing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we see that salvation faith is superior to charismatic faith. Salvation faith, faith in Christ, faith for Christianity, faith for believing in Jesus Christ is superior to the faith that you want for the results of life. Amen. Faith in Jesus Christ will always supersede the faith of results. Remember Elizabeth and Zachariah who were believing for a child. In the, in the Bible that Elizabeth and Zachariah were believing for a child whose name is John the Baptist. Zachariah held the priesthood of Israel. Are we still here? Yes. Hallelujah, are we still here? Yes. Zachariah held the priesthood of Israel. So it didn't make sense for him not to receive a child because he had the Abrahamic blessing. There is, there is, a, there is a grace that priests have in the Old Testament. Amen? So Zachariah was a priest in ancient Israel and he had married uh, 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 his wife, Elizabeth, who was in the lineage of Christ. Amen? Or rather, in the lineage of the priesthood of Israel. So it didn't make sense for them to not receive the child. So they prayed and prayed. 
They prayed, God, give us a child. God, give us a child. The child wouldn't come. God, give us a child. The child wouldn't come. They did everything right. They were serving God. They were priests in ancient Israel. They prayed, God, give us a child. The child didn't come. But only when the time allowed, the child came. The child came, brother. So faith works in the precepts of seasons and times. It is bounded by seasons and times. Amen. The, the child that they were going to receive, John the Baptist, was going to be an usher for Jesus Christ. So before they couldn't, John the Baptist couldn't be conceived because Mary had not yet been embedded with the Holy Spirit. So immediately when Mary had the Holy Spirit, that's when uh, 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 he came in contact with Elizabeth and he was ushered in the presence of God. Amen? Hallelujah. We also remember that Elkanah had two wives, Penina and Hannah. The, 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 the mother of Samuel. What, the, what did the Bible say? The Bible says he went, she went every year to Shiloh to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Every year. Everywhere she went to the mountain of Shiloh so that she gave sacrifices to the Lord because she wanted a child. The Bible says she cried and she cried because she was, she was abused by the, the other one. The Bible says she cried, but at some point, the time and the season of God allowed. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's a kairos in your work with God. There's a kairos. Not all days are the same. Not all church services are the same. There's a part of a service where you can get in and it can change your life forever. Hallelujah. So we must not be complacent. We must not be regular. We must not get used to the presence of God. The Bible says she went and she knelt down and she prayed and asked and said, Lord, give me a child and I will give him back to you. Already the, ch the children of Eli were put on bait because they were going to be removed from the priesthood. I know this, is, this might be... <laughs> Oh, for some of you who are not really familiar with the story. But the children of Eli were, all, were going to be put off from the priesthood. So Samuel was going to be born as a destiny child to replace the priesthood of Israel. Hallelujah. Samuel was going to be born to replace the priesthood of Israel. So unless and until the time allowed, he was not going to be born. Amen. We see it with our Savior Jesus Christ in the, mount, in, the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He cried bitterly. He wept. And his tears, or rather his sweat, became drops of blood. And he said, Lord, if this be your will, let it be. Let it come to pass. But remove this cup from me. From me, rather. He didn't want to die for our sins. He was scared. In other words, there's a point in his life, in the life of Jesus Christ, where he was nervous where he was, he was skeptical, he was scared, he was doubtful. So he was like, I don't want to die for these people's sins. But Lord, if it be your will, let it come to pass. So in that point, charismatic faith and salvation faith were conflicting. He didn't want it by charismatic faith, but by the superior salvation faith, the will of God prevailed. Hallelujah. The will of God is always superior. But the Lord, we must understand that God wants the best for us. God wants the best for us. You know, when I was 15, I told God, I said, Lord, I choose to give you the best. I choose to give you my best. And they didn't know what I was speaking about because every year seems like the best year. Every year, every year, every year seems like the best year. Some people worry, some people don't have sleep, some people worry, some people cry. Not me, because I have learned something. First Peter 5 verse 7. Cast all your cares unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Hallelujah. Cast all your burdens, all your anxieties, all your fears. You cast them. Do, do you see it? You cast. But I'm to cast is to throw. <laughs> Ah, Jesus. So you don't take the care, you don't, you don't meddle with the care, you don't play with the care. You cast, you throw it. You make a qualified committal to put trust in God. Amen. Independent of what is happening in your life. Hallelujah. That is salvation faith. Faith for Christ. Faith in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. James in the, in the Bible speaks about us asking. You know, how do we activate charismatic faith? We ask. The Bible says you ask and you do not receive because when you ask, you ask amiss. Asking amiss does not necessarily mean you are asking too much. Because the Bible says it is he who gives us all things freely to enjoy. Amen. 
So it does not necessarily mean that you are asking too much. It means you are asking out of the context of time. You are asking amiss. No matter how much you pray and fast and speak in tongues, if you want marriage and you are in high school, it is not the time. Hallelujah. It is not the time. So now it is important to sensitize yourself to the Spirit of God so that you know what the season of your life in the now holds, so that your prayers are relevant. Amen. Do you know what God wants you, wants for you for now? Do you know what God is doing with your life for the now? Do you know what God, where God is taking you? I know where God is taking me. Oh, I know. And I'm going there stronger. I'm going there faster. Hallelujah. I'm going there with optimum, optimum excellence by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, was Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. You know, it is, it is, it is rare to find people who walk in genuine faith to walk in genuine faith. You know, in, in, in my life, I've only met a few people who are sold out for God, regardless of what is happening in their lives. Hallelujah. I want us now to look at the book of Revelations chapter 4. No, no, let's continue. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Chapter 11, verse 2. Let's do verse 2 now. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2. It says, this is what the ancients were commended for. <laughs> By faith we understand. It says, by faith we understand. By faith we understand. So you don't understand by knowledge, you understand by faith. There's a higher way of doing things in Christianity. So sometimes you don't understand where you are, what is happening with your life, but by faith you choose to believe to be true. Amen? It says, by faith we accept, we understand, we capture that the universe was formed by God's command, by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Amen? It says, by faith we understand that the worlds, the ages, the dispensations, the times were framed by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made for what is seen, but what is unseen. Amen? Whatever we see in our life was framed by the word of God. So that, that when, when he says that the universe, the correct rendering, and I'm saying this with all respect, the correct rendering is ages. It is the word times. They could have used times in translating. So he says, by faith we understand that the times and seasons of our life were formed by the command of God. Hallelujah. The times and the seasons of our lives, the times and the seasons of our lives were formed were catatizzled by the speakings, by the outward expressions of the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God has creative ability. What is the Word of God? The Word of God is not the Bible. The Word of God is the Bible in you. That is the Word of God. Amen. When it is sitting down, it is the speaking. This is the writing of God. When it is in you, it is called the Word of God, the Rema of God. Amen. It is the Rema, the Word of God for you for now. Hallelujah. Pastor Lord, this is blessing me. I feel like screaming and jumping and shouting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you go to the book of Revelations chapter 4, verse 4? Thank you, Jesus. Revelations chapter 4, verse 4. It says, can you read it together? One to go. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. Hallelujah. It says that there was, there's a, this is John. John was in the Isle of Patmos. He was taken to heaven. And he says he saw a throne, and around the throne were 24 other thrones. Amen. Were 24 other thrones. And in those thrones were seated 24 elders, 24 people. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. Those 24 people had crowns of gold on their heads, and they were dressed in white. Remember what the book of Isaiah says? that we are now called the oaks of righteousness because we have been embedded, we have been dressed by the white robes of God. Amen. It says around the throne were 24 elders. So now, those elders 
were not or are not angels. Amen. Then let me prove my case. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 8 and 10. Revelation, chapter 5, verse 8 and 10. It says, When he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden balls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Chapter 9. I mean, verse 9. This is our emphasis. Verse 9, 10. And, and they sang a new song. So who are they that sing a new song? Those are the twenty-four elders. It says, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased man for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Ten. You have made them to be our kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Can we go back to nine? I want to show you something as well. Thank you, Jesus. It says, Because you were slain with your blood, and you purchased men. These are the 24 elders speaking. So in the correct, in the, or rather in the Hebrew, in the Aramaic rendering, it says that they sang a new song, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain, and with your blood you have purchased us from God, for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. Amen. And people and nation. And people and nation. And people and nation. So, those 24 elders are people that have captured the heart of God. They were able to journey in God to an extent that they were able to tap certain frequencies of the heart of God. There is a way superior in Christ. Amen. There is a way superior in Christ. There is a superior way. The Bible says they were, they were redeemed. The only thing that can be redeemed is man because Christ died for men, not for angels. Amen. It says, you have redeemed us. You have purchased us. You have redeemed us. So now how? How did these people get to a point where they are seated on the throne of God? How did it get to a point where these people are in the presence of God continually and casting their crowns? They have followed a superior way. <sighs> Hallelujah. But Zalani, the Bible, the word, prayer and fasting are not the end in themselves. They are a means to an end. Amen. Some of those people got there before the Bible was. Can you go to verse 4, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4? Remember, we are doing an exposition. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. It says, By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks, even though he is dead. This is Abel. This was before the Torah. This was before the Bible. Amen. This was before faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But these people had faith. This is not charismatic faith. This is salvation faith. He says, by faith they offered God a better sacrifice. So he was able to tap in the heart of God and take a place in the throne of God because he followed the way called love. There's a superior way. There's a superior way called the way of love. The way of love. The way of intimacy. The way of oneness. The way of passion. The way of fire. These are the men of old that follow this way. Amen. These are the men of old that follow this way. When you come to church and you pray and you sing and you go back to the world and do things that you're not supposed to do, you don't know him yet. You think you do, but you don't know him. Oh, you don't. You don't know him. You don't know him. As I said in the book of Isaiah 1 6, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. And immediately when he saw the Lord, he realized how dirty his mouth was. The first point of an encounter with the God of the Bible is cleanliness and purity. The first point, the first point, before you prophesy, before you preach, before you sing, before you speak in tongues, before you roll on the floor, before you cry, before we mention you, before we know you, are you living right? Amen. Are you living right to the glory of God? Reputation is for us. There's a reputation for us, but character is for God. Character is for God. God judges the hearts of men. 
The Bible says the word of God is sharp and it is able to discern between the hearts of men. Amen. It is able to discern, it is able to distinguish with this one. Where is this one? What is this one doing? Oh, he doesn't know me yet. He thinks he does, but he does not. Oh, he thinks he does, but he does not. Hallelujah. As we are teaching faith, let's go to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Song of Songs, chapter 3, verse 1. Can we read it together? We went to and we'll continue. All night long on my bed, I looked for the one my heart loves. I looked for him. I will get up now and go about the city through it. My heart loves. So I looked for him but did not find him. Three. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. Have you seen the one my heart loves? Four. Scarcely had I passed them. My heart loves and would not let him go till I had brought him to my mother's house, to the room of the one who conceived me. It's like the Christian of today. There's a point, or rather there's a, there's a time, there's a place where lovers meet. There's a place where lovers meet. There's a place where intimate conversations are held. But she says now she was lying on her bed, the place of intimacy between lovers, but she could not find the one her heart desires. Amen. Amen. She could not find the one her heart desires in that particular place, in that sacred place. find a sweet spot because the bed had been defined. Amen. Is your bed clean? Does God look on you? Can God look at you and find pleasure? Amen. And that is also to me as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can God look at us and find pleasure? Can God look at us and find beauty? Yes, there is eternal beauty because of Jesus Christ. But can God look at us and be pleased with our lives? So he says that, she, she says, the Shulamite woman, the Christian of today, that she, she, the bed was defiled. And because the bed was defiled, Ichabod, the presence of God, had withdrawn. Bazalwani, have you ever seen that you are, when you are on fire for God, and you do something that you know you shouldn't do, and then you want to get back to God? It's not as easy as it was before. So now you are going to start searching for the one your heart loves. And you know her search was misplaced. The Bible, she says that she went to the city. Ah, that is not where she met, or rather well, that is not where they stay. She went to the city. She went to the watchman. She's looking for someone in a wrong place. Hallelujah. She's looking for her lover in a wrong place. That is not where you find your lover. That is not where you sit with your lover. She is looking for the love of her love in a place that she did not initially find intimacy with him. Amen. The best and the most important place that she should look upon is within the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is within the house. The first point of looking for your lover is within the house. It is within the house. It's within the chambers of the house. The house of God is the word of God. Amen. The house of God is the word of God. The house of God is the word of God. So the first point that you should look for a lover is in the word of God. Amen. She should search for her lover in the word of God and then she will find her sweet spot there. She will get back to an intimate place with the person of her love. Amen. If you have lost your sweet spot, whatever you do is not received. Bazalwani, the Apostle Paul says some preach Christ out of goodness, some preach Christ out of envy. Nevertheless, let Christ be preached. He says some preach Christ out of positivity, some preach Christ out of negativity. Nevertheless, let Christ be preached. So you can preach to people, you can sing, you can be known as Christian in your workplace. But if you don't have a sweet spot, your rewards are not going to be actualized. 
You're going to be in church for 15 years and wonder why are people enjoying their thing with God. So and so is successful. Lord, what about me? What about me? It is because you have lost the one that you love. You have lost your sweet spot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There we must always make sure that we don't depart from the presence of God. We must always make sure that we are always in the presence of God. There is what we call the presence of God by being Christian. Can I have volume, brother? <laughs> Hallelujah. There is what we call the presence of God because of your Christian. When you are Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. That is the presence of God. But not everyone has the glory of God. Hallelujah. There's a glory of God. There's a glory in that part. When you have the glory of God, you are, you are a custodian of a facet of the person of God. There are people like that. I've met two in my life. There are people who are houses of God, who are custodians of the glory of God. Amen. There are people who are custodians of the glory of God. They live God. Every part of their life is God. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Everything of their lives is God. They are in captured. They are dominated. They are taken over by the love and the passion they have for the Lord. Amen. And that is where we are going through salvation faith. Amen. That is where we are going. Let us go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 16. Yes, we are going to close. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 16. Ah, thank you Jesus. Can we read it all together? One to go. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Hey. Hallelujah. It says we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you delve deep in the presence of God, God plays hide and seek. Amen. Sometimes God plays a hide and seek. Isaiah 65 verse 1 says, I have been found by those who sought me not. I have been revealing myself to those who wanted me not. I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that rebelled against me. So, sometimes you need to journey in seeking the presence of God. Sometimes you need to walk like the Shulamite woman. You need to walk inside the house. You need to seek inside the house the glory of God. Amen. And as you are seeking like that, you get weary, you get tired. You say, Lord, where are you? Lord, where are you? I need a job. Where is my job? Lord, I need a house. Where is my house? Lord, where is that husband you promised me? Lord, where is that business? Where am I going with this family? Lord, what is happening? Your outward man is dying, but yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Because it is renewed by faith in Christ. That is superior for faith for results. Amen. Can you go to the next one? 17. It says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It says, for our light and momentary troubles. Lord, what do you mean it's light? I need a bursary. Lord, I need to pass. What do you mean it's light? The Bible says, for our light and momentary troubles. Lord, what do you mean it's light? My mother just passed on. People are sick at home. There's no direction. It says, our light and momentary troubles. It says, for our light afflictions have come to pass. They have come to pass. Amen. Our light afflictions, the afflictions, the challenges, the things that we face have come so that they can pass. If they have come to pass, what did they come in the first place? They have come so that they work in me a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. A far more beautiful glory. A far more splendid life. How so? While I look not at what I do not see. Amen. Can you go to verse 18? It says, so we fix our eyes, not on what we, is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. But we fix our eyes, not on what is seen. Are you seeing the business, or are you seeing the capital? Are you seeing the house, or are you seeing the salary? 
If you're seeing the salary, if you're seeing the capital, you're looking at the wrong thing. Ah, Jesus. You are looking at the wrong thing because he says we fix our eyes not on what we, we see, but on what is unseen. Unseen that does not does not mean it means consideration. Your consideration and your heart is on what God promised you, irregardless of what is happening in the present day. Amen. What did God promise you? What does God say about your life in the Bible? When you take the Bible and open it, what does God say? God says, I have plans for you. I have good intentions for you. To give you hope, to prosper you, to give you an expected end. An expected end. An expected end. So there's an expectation that you must have. Hallelujah. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we wage what? We wage not war after the flesh. Hey, but Lord, my heart is bubbling with the word of God. It's very hard to, to wish. So he says, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. The things that God has promised us, the things that God has said to us, the things that God has told you is unseen at the moment. So choose to look at those things that are unseen. Choose to focus on those things that he has promised you. Choose to put your devotion on those things that, are, that he has said about your life. Remember the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. The Bible says serpents were in the desert and those snakes would bite them. And when those snakes would bit them like that, when those snakes bit them like that, they created an, uh, a bronze snake. Do you remember that? Yeah. They created a bronze snake. And the Bible says, whenever someone is bit by that snake that was on the floor, they should look on the bronze snake and then they get healed. Amen? So whenever the snake bites them, they look on the bronze snake. When, when the snake bites them, they don't look at the snake and try to kick the snake and I kiss you in Jesus' name, die, die. That is what a lot of Christians are doing. And they will never receive their healing. Because you need to look on the snake on the scepter. Remember, he keeps him in perfect peace. His eyes are stayed on him. So there's a focus that your mind and your eyes should have. Not on the momentary troubles of your life, but on the promises of God for your life. Amen. On the promises of God for your life. On the promises of God for your life. What does God want for you? What does God need for you? Are you looking at the now or are you looking at that sea? If you are looking at the now, you will be a defeated Christian. Amen. You will be a Christian that is weary, a Christian that is angry. You will wonder, why does God bless them? What about me? I've been serving in this church. I've been doing this and this and nothing is coming my way. You are looking at the wrong thing. Amen. You are looking at the wrong thing. Look on Jesus. You are not here to, oh, with all due respect, we are not here to be friends. Yes, I have friends here. I love all of you. But we are not here to be friendly. We are here for God. Amen. Primarily, we are here for God. So if you lose sight on God, you will not actualize the promises of God over your lives. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by? Hearing by? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by? The word of God. Faith cometh. In other words, faith has a consciousness. Faith is a spiritual reality. It is not a force necessarily. Amen. It is a thing that has consciousness. It is an entity of the spirit that has consciousness. You can send it and unsend it. You unsend it by doubt. You send it by proclamation. Amen. 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 So he says, faith by cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it does not necessarily mean that faith, general faith, Charismatic faith and salvation faith generally cometh by you feeling on the word of God because you are hearing the word of God. But faith for a particular thing, faith for a result. Let's say I want this speaker. Amen. I'm Christian and I say, Lord, I want the speaker so much. 
I don't just take any word in the Bible and declare over the scripture. No, I sit in the secret place and I speak to my God. And after the word, after the, the word of God, the realm of God, the plan of God, the strategy of God comes for my life for the now. And I actualize it. Amen. Do you see it? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So faith comes when you hear the word of God for your result for the now. Faith for a result comes when you hear the directive of God. Amen. Remember, the weapons of our warfare are not common. Hallelujah. It says, though we walk in the flesh, though we live in the flesh, though we are Though we are clothed with the body, we don't live as those who are of the world. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. It's saying though we walk in the flesh, though we are beings, though we have bodies, we don't live like those who have bodies. For the weapons, the word weapons means stratomai. It is the word strategies. In other words, the way we win is an unconventional way. Hallelujah. Win in unconventional ways. Father Abraham had faith, and the Bible says he considered not his own body, which was hundred years old, or the body of Sarah, his wife, but he con continued through faith and had faith in God that he who promised is also able to deliver. The Bible says he was hundred years old and Sarah was ninety years old. So by the ways of the earth, they should have gone to a doctor. Amen. They would have gone to someone, a specialist, to help them conceive, to help them conceive rather. But they chose to use a superior way, the way of faith. The way of faith, the way of faith, the way of faith. Because the Lord, there are higher ways in Christ. There are higher ways, amen. Judgment is true, but mercy is truer. Hallelujah. Father Abraham chose to use a higher way. For example, when you watch uh, mixed martial arts or wrestling, when someone punches you and you punch them back, that is justice because you have received what you have given. Amen? When someone punches you and he doesn't punch you back, that is mercy because you have not received what you have given. When someone punches you and he gives you a cake, that is grace. Because he gives you more than you deserve. And the Bible says we have received of his fullness grace after grace after grace after grace. Hallelujah. We have received grace on top of grace, on top of grace, on top of grace. So let us stand in faith. Let us stand in believing that Christ is for us. That Christ favors us. That Christ wants the good for us. Amen. And in all our believing, let salvation faith be superior to charismatic faith. Let faith in Christ be superior to faith for results in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just bow our heads as we are about to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you and we thank you. Thank you for your word, Lord, for you said in your word that ye are clean by the word that I have spoken. Thank you for the outward speakings of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for teaching us, believing you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that nothing competes with you in our lives. Thank you that you are the center and you are the leader of all things, that everything revolves around you. Lord, we choose you, we choose you, we choose you. Father, we choose you, we choose you, we choose you a thousand times. Father, we choose you in the name of Jesus. We have no other God but you, Lord. You are the plan A of our lives, you are the plan B of our lives, you are the plan C, and every plan that we can ever fix, Lord. Father, we choose to adopt the superior way that you, you, you bring to us. We choose to adopt the way that you propose unto us, O God. And that is the way of love and the way of faith. The way of being captured and being passionate for you and you alone, O God. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with our, with our heads bowed, I would like those who say, Lord, I want to believe you. I want to believe you independent of what is happening in my life. The Lord has happened. I have had doubts. 
I have trusted you, I have untrusted you. I want you to come forward and say, Lord, I choose to recommit. I choose to take this day and say, Lord, today I'm trying again. I'm going again. I want to have faith in you again. Faith in you independent of what is happening in my life. I want you to raise your hand as we are going to pray for you. Raise your hand wherever you are. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Raise your hand. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you come forward, we are going to pray for you. Please stand up and come forward. You say, Lord, I choose to believe in you. Lord, I choose to trust you. Let's do it once again. Let's do it once again. Let's do it once again, Jesus. Let's clap hands for them as they come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I would like all of our leaders to come forward. Mama Nana, Yami, and Bondela, everyone, please come forward, our leaders, as we pray for them. That the